go on to the opponents. But there's going to be a very interesting one on one of these players' teams. You can see them getting ready on the stage. Bartosz on your right-hand side there, Francesco on your left. And yeah, speaking of that Dragonite, it does have extreme speed. It, it is the normal Terra type. Mm -hmm. And yet there is the move Fire Spin on that Dragonite. <laughs> and that's a move that we haven't seen for uh, quite a while, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm trying, struggling to remember the last time I saw Fire Spin used oh, on a Pokemon, maybe Turtonator back in the previous format when it was just paired with the Iron Defense Bottom Press. But yeah, Fire Spin, a really, really cool tech from that Dragonite. Mm -hmm. Going to be able to get that residual damage, just like a Garganacle yep. that is also featured on Francesco's team. <laughs> so you can really start to stack up those damages. And on top of extra for the Salt Cure would do, the extra damage, the Fire Spin is able to trap the Pokemon as well. So mm -hmm. if you're going for the Fire Spin, you're going for the Salt Cure, the Pokemon is definitely trapped and taking double residual damage over the turn. So I think it's a really, really cool tech coming out for this Dragonite. Yes, and that's not the only thing that is interesting about Dragonite. It's also rocking that Rocky Helmet. And we've often seen it, you know, running again, that Choice Band. Sometimes you might see it running an Assault Vest, but Rocky Helmet normally is on its, you know, partner of Amoongus from time to time. Mm. But it's interesting to see this Dragonite, again, having that residual damage, like you've mentioned, Jamie, if any moves make contact with it, they're gonna have to take a little bit of damage thanks to that item choice. And I think you can see with Francesco's team as well, the way that it does have that longevity on the field. There's a lot of bulk options. There's a lot of ways to whittle away HP. You know, there's a Tauros there as well. There's running Will-O-Wisp. That's a way to chip away at you. And there's also recovery options, for example, Gastrodon with Recover. But if we take a closer look at both of our players here, Francesco has been a veteran for over a decade of Pokemon play. Italy national champion way back in 2011 and Bartosz has a lot of accomplishments as well. Yeah, multiple top, cu top cuts behind Bartosz's name as well, so yeah, this is definitely going to be an exciting one. Bartosz is going to be running that, that rain core that we have mm -hmm. mentioned, the Pelippers being very common in the top cut, going to be running that uh, alongside with the Dreadnought. So we haven't mm -hmm. seen many Dreadnoughts coming out with the Pelippers. It's Previously, uh, at least on the stream, we've seen a lot of Palafins paired with the Pelipper, which mm -hmm. also is going to work out very well, but Dreadnought specifically gets Swift Swim. The point of the Palafins is to go for Jet Punch with priority. Dreadnought is just to be able to outspeed every every Pokemon and go for powerful liquidations. Yeah, Dreadnought doesn't need to undergo a heroic transformation. It's already a hero by the time mm. it gets onto the battlefield. And it has, you know, really nice options to be able to be flexible with its Terra typing. I remember in San Diego, Alex Brock top four team had the Grass Terra and then it could go for Terra Blast and be able to deal out big damage using a Grass type move. The Dreadnought on Bartosh side is different, however. It's Terra type water, so going to be able to get even more damage out on the field with this water type moves in the form of liquidation and it's rocking that life orb as well to get an extra boost. Yeah, absolutely. We saw the benefit of the grass type on the Palafin, but you very much can go for an offensive terra type with that water as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, we can see Francesco's team here. Very, very cool indeed. Yeah. Lots on lots and lots of ways of just whittling down the opponent. You've got the Sulk here on the Garganacle, you've got the Fire Spin on the Dragonite, you've got will o -Wisp on Taurus, and you've even got the potential of Toxic Spikes that's set up <laughs> by Toxic Debris from the Glamora. So lots of ways of just slowly chipping things down. And then you've got something like the Dragapult with the Choice Band that's just going to be able to clear things up after they've taken that residual damage. Exactly. And again, recovery options. You know, Garganacle has the Recover, so does the Gastrodon. So once you've got that residual damage set up on the field, if you've got these bulkier Pokemon with recovery options there, you can just stall through, let the residual damage do its thing, and pick up KOs that way. So it might be a little bit of a long game, but it's certainly a solid strategy. On the flip side, however, on Bartosz's team, again, you've mentioned we've got that Rain Core, but we've also got a few great support Pokemon in the form of that Pormot and the Amoongus. Yeah, absolutely. We saw Pormot quite quite commonly yesterday. Uh, that Revival be Blessing is going to be very, very impactful throughout mm -hmm. the game. Uh, I did see that Bartosz was saying that he was playing with six and a half Pokemon yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, the Revival Blessing seemed mm -hmm. to be a key strategy for him. Uh, at least in that day one, we'll have to see if that's going to be the case going forward into this top cut. Exactly, and again, really good offensive Pokemon on here. We saw King Gambit yesterday do so much frustrating presence placing on the field because you just weren't able to KO it if you didn't have the utility. And particularly when it's able to go for its Terra type, it can be really disruptive, take moves that would have been super effective, and then in its flying type is going to be you know, resisted. And that, that can be very kind of disrupting to an opponent when you're going for something like a close combat you're not only not going to deal a lot of damage, but you're going to have to take those drops as well and then contend with those on your side with your defenses weakened. Yeah, absolutely. That's the one of the main reasons that you are running the Focus Sash there on the four mods, uh, so that even if you are going for close combats, you're not going to be able to worry too much about the drop defenses so that you can commit to uh, that massive offense. We saw poor mods uh, run yesterday as well with Nuzzle, but they did still opt for close combat. So just having that double shock option available uh, is going to be quite nice for the extra mm -hmm. damage uh, coming out as well. And yeah, the... The, sal the Salamence as well, not quite going to be the, the Life Orb that we've seen previously. Just committing to the Hurricanes being very strong. Uh, so that's going to be able to still set the Tailwinds. But not quite a strong Draco Meteors because uh, the Life Orb is on the Dreadnought instead. That's the one that wants to be doing the massive damage. Another Pokemon I want to talk about that Francesco is actually running is that Tauros Paldean form. So there's two forms that have been really dominant in VGC, which is the Blaze form and the Aqua form um, as well. And I think 
the interesting thing is t the Tauros on Francesco's side is that Blaze form. When I was actually taking a look at the Seniors finals yesterday, um, the Aqua form was the one that was, you know, very dominant and actually won out that finals for Teddy. Um, and so it's nice to see the variety of Tauros coming into the fray, you know, being able to go for a powerful close combat and also having utility moves like the Will-O-Wisp can allow it to be both offensive and a key support Pokemon. Yeah, absolutely. We saw a resurgence of Taurus um, back in the San Diego regionals. I think that they were very much heavily weighted to the Aqua Breed. So mm -hmm. it is very nice to see that the Blaze Breed is getting some love as well. Uh, because, yeah, like it gets the Will-O-Wisp. Aqua yeah. Breed definitely does not do that. And... I don't think there's any way of the Aqua Breed to be able to just slowly whittle down the opponents. The Blaze mm -hmm. Breed can absolutely do that. So paired with the Residual Damage of the Gargan Aqua Primora and the, um, the Dragonite as well, that may, may be that just a little bit extra on top mm -hmm. of the extra damage that you can still do with the Close Combats and the Flare Blitz as well. Uh, that's, that might be the extra way, especially with the damage reduction as well. Because if you, if you burn them and then they're not doing as much damage, then they're not going to be able to break through you quickly enough as the residual damage is still stacking up. And one of the cool things I've seen Taurus do as well is being paired with the Mirror Herb item. Remember Giovanni Costa rock that in San Diego. Mm -hmm. On Francesco's team, you've got the safety goggles instead, which again is another nice move to have in the face of something like an Amoongus, particularly when you're a fire type. You can apply pressure with that flare blitz. It's going to deal a huge chunk of damage to a disruptive Amoongus, and you don't have to worry about taking a spore. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen, I think, commonly safety goggles is one of the key items on Taurus. We mm. saw it on the, the uh, team that did win the San Diego regionals on G-Stock Lee's team on the Aqua Breeds Taurus. It was mm -hmm. still running safety goggles. It's interesting to see that safety goggles seems to be the item of choice on both of the breeds of the Taurus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be just some nice consistency. And in this top 32, he is facing down an Amoongus. So the safety goggles definitely could be impactful there. Exactly. And the Dragapult, again, a Pokemon that I remember when it first came into the format, it was, you know, really well used. You could go into Dynamax for it back then as well. And it was a key Pokemon going for those Max Phantasms. But the nice thing I see with this Dragapult is that Choice Band. It's going straight onto the offensive. You know, Dragon Dance can deal a huge pack when there are so many dragons out on the field. You know, we've seen Salamence, we've seen Garchomp, we've seen Hydreigon, um, and of course Dragonite as well. So it's nice to have that offensive pressure straight out of the blocks, as well as having switchability in the form of U-Turn. That allows you, if you maybe leading Dragapult for a really nice fast offensive start and the ball position isn't great you can go for that nice speedy U-turn and then reset for later in the game. Yeah absolutely and I just want to point out the outrage that is also on that Dragapult. <laughs> we saw a very successful Dragonite with a choice band that was locking into outrages as well and that was the move of choice the mm. entirety of that game so we've seen that the benefit of outrage and how, how strong that can be because you can go for a Dragon Darts and that's going to be consistent damage and spread damage to hit both of the opponents mm -hmm. but outrage would be significantly stronger against one of them so if, you're, if you need to be doing that massive damage, then Outrage could be the move of choice, especially paired with that Terra of Dragon. Well, here we go. It's top 32 at the Liverpool Regional Championships, and we have got a Pelipper and King Gambit out on the field. On the opposing side, it is that Dragonite that we've been talking about, but paired up with Garganical. Yeah, so it looks like residual damage is the name of the game for Francesco coming out immediately. You've got the option to go for Salt Cure and Fire Spin on this turn. Uh, you are somewhat threatened on the, on the Garganacle because of the Pelipper being able to hit it with Hydro Pump and the King mm -hmm. Gambit threatening it with Iron Head as well. It is going to be the Grass type on the on the Terra type of the Garganacle. So if you are brave enough to go for a Hurricane as the Garganacle go does go for a Terra, that's still going to be doing significant damage. There doesn't seem to be too much damage available on this Dragonite at the moment, especially since mm -hmm. it's still got the multi-scale. You need to break out that at some points, but the first hit is not really going to be doing too much damage at all. And the fact that it has Roost as well available, even if you do break the multi-scale, it could just roost straight back up. So you're going to have to prioritize which one you're targeting here. If you're going to try and break the multi-scale, you kind of have to commit to taking care of the Dragonite before it would roost back up. And it's the same thing with the Garganacle because it's also got recovery. It's got recover. So there is going to be an immediate terror here from mm -hmm. the King Gambit. It's going to be a oh. extra strong dark type attacks with that dark terror. Interesting to see it not being a defensive type, but instead switching to the offensive with this King Gambit straight out of the blocks of Bartosz. Garganarko, I think, wisely going for a protect, knowing it's going to be a prime target for Bartosz very early on in this game. Pelipper going for the Hurricane, though, into that opposing Dragonite. Only does a little bit of damage, but I think was really trying to get something like that confusion. Draco Meter is what it's going to have to take for its troubles. It's able to take that really well. It does do over 50%, but Dragonite, of course, does get the special attack drop from that Draco Meteor. It's going to be the Citrus Bear on the Pelipper as well, so that's going to recover quite nicely there. And Iron Head was the move of mm. choice into the Garganacle, so they're going for the Dark Terror there and not opting to go for a Dark type attack, so a little bit of a defensive Terror. The fact that it's mm -hmm. facing down the Garganacle and the Salt Cure would have done extra damage to what would have been a Steel type. That's uh, true. That might have been the reason for that defensive Terror there, because uh, that wasn't particularly an offensive one on that turn because of the Iron Head, so. Yeah, just trying to reduce the amount of damage that could have been done that turn. Because Iron Head, it would have done a nice chunk to the Garganacle. And so the fact that you were going for Hurricanes, the Dragonite, means mm -hmm. that you weren't going to be able to knock out the Garganacle that turn. Mm -hmm. Maybe you still can with a Hydro Pump and an Iron Head, but definitely not if it's switching out. 
Yeah, I think the key thing, though, was breaking that multi-scale on the opposing Dragonite as well. So it's now gon not going to have that extra vulnerability that it gets. Gastrodon's on the field, and I'm very happy that Francesco has picked the correct choice of Gastrodon with that green and blue form on the field. Dragonite's going to have to take another Hurricane, and it's going to go for that Fire Spin trapping in that King Gambit. So King Gambit is not going to be able to switch out and will have to take a little bit of residual damage each turn. It's able to go for the Calton Cleave, however, into that Dragonite and pick up the KO against it. But now Francesco has the utility to bring in a Pokemon from the back that might be able to deal very swiftly with this King Gambit and there's not a lot that King Gambit can do. Yeah, very, very nice targeting from Bartosz there that turn. Uh, because the Gastron switching in, if you went for a Hydro Pump into the Garganathan slot, that would have been completely mm -hmm. useless and absorbed by that Gastrodon Storm Drain. So very nice targeting there. Breaking the Molt Scale on that first turn, meaning that the Hurricane and the Kowtow Cleave would have been strong enough to pick up the KO. And now forcing this Taurus in, that is going to be intimidating, bo intimidating both Bartosz's Pokemon, activating that Defiance. So now that King Gamut is going to be extra strong. And the Kowtow Cleaves, powered up by that Dark Terror as well, will do some massive damage to mm -hmm. that Gastron. As soon as you take care of the Gastron, Pelipper is freed up to be able to Hydro Pump the Garganapple that is waiting in the back. And it can also still just go for Hurricanes. It doesn't really matter at this point mm -hmm. uh, that the Gastron is on the field, because you'd want to be Hurricane in this position anyway, especially into the Taurus. Exactly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gastrodon maybe playing a little bit defensively, going for a Protect. So it's going to help out its partner Taurus as well. In its Blaze breed, it's going to be that Fire typing. And again, it doesn't want to take a Hydro Punt either. So I think it's good that Gastrodon's there providing that support with its ability. But at the same time, you need to be able to start taking some critical KOs. Taurus is definitely a Pokemon that's capable of doing that. Certainly like a close combat down into that opposing King Gambit. I think we'll be able to possibly get the KO against it. However, this King Gambit is not an Assault Vest variant. It is one rocking the Black Glasses. So really going to be hitting hard on the dark side, but allowing it the flexibility to have protect on its moveset. So it definitely can go for a protect it on the face of that close combat. It's not four times weak to it anymore, so it may be able to survive depending on how the Taurus and the Kingdom are trained, but here is a Gastrodon Terra and it is the Steel type. Gastrodon has an axe, you need to watch out for it. The King Gambit is going to go for a Protector in the face of that Tauros, and I love this Steel typing on the Gastrodon at this point. Tauros going for the will of us actually, not on for the KO straight away um, and just trying to weaken the potential of that King Gambit. Pelipper's going to be able to capitalize on the fact that it's not being targeted down by Francesco and getting the Tailwind up, so it's going to have a little bit of speed. But Gastrodon is actually going to do a little bit of chip into that opposing Pelipper. Yeah, very nice Protect and Tailwind there on the Pelipper. Uh, that should allow the King Gambit to potentially outspeed this Taurus, depending on how it is trained. So if it does, it is able to outspeed, then it will be able to get that massive Kowtok Cleave into the Gastrodon before any will -O or Close Combats come out. So Francesco opting for the will -O there, maybe mm -hmm. not confident that the Close Combat would KO this this King Gambit, given the fact that it was no longer four times weak to it, and still not going to be committing to a attack with the Taurus, switching out into the Garganacle, so very dangerous if you're going to be intimidating this King Gambit in the future as well. Yeah, that's very true. The Gastrodon's just going to go for a Protect again, playing very defensively, wanting to keep its Storm Drain ability on the field. Pelipper's just going for these Hurricanes, connects onto that opposing Gargan Garganacle, is doing a little bit of chip, but no confusion coming through here. Calcium Cleave going into the Protect of the Gastrodon, so wise defensive play from Francesco, and it looks like the Garganacle's able to to come in relatively safely, gonna get a little bit of leftovers recovery as well, and can start applying pressure with something, um, you know, into that opposing Palapa. Yeah, you can go for the Salt Cure pretty comfortably at this point into the, into the Palapa, because Gastrodon's on the field, you can't go for a Hydro Pump in, into the Garganacle this mm -hmm. turn, so it would be very, very free to go for the Salt Cure. And the, the super effectiveness paired with the fact that the Pelipper's a water type means that at the end of the turn, the Pelipper would almost certainly go down to that Salt Cure. And that would take away one of the better ways of dealing with the Garganacle. You still do have Iron Head available on the King Gamut, and so you can very, very comfortably go for that as well. But I don't think the Garganacle would be KO'd to the combination of Iron Head and just Hurricane is the only move of choice that Pelipper could go for, unless you were going for Hydro Pump, expecting this Gastron to switch out <laughs> like it did. But the fact that the Taurus is now switching in, that's another Intimidate onto the King Gambit. That's now plus two thanks to its Defiance. I mean, it is top 32. Anything can happen. These reads have been made by players before, and that's why they are in this top cut of the tournament. But Pelipper is just going to go for the Hurricane, however. And it gets the one-hit KO on that opposing Tauros. So Tauros is out, and unfortunately for Francesco, like you mentioned, Jamie, it's just come in and given a Defiant boost to this King Gambit. So this Calton Cleave is certainly going to hurt. I know that the Garganacle has a base power defense of 130, oh, 120, I think it is, but that's just not going to be enough in the face of this King Gambit. Not at all. Those Intimidates were really coming back to bite Francesco there. Uh, the plus two paired with that Dark Terror means you didn't even know, need to go for the super effective Iron Head there. Kauto mm. Cleave going to be strong enough into something as bulky as the Garganacle there. So now it's just this lone Gastrodon, and as much as we believe in the Gastrodon, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be able to come back here. So yeah, really, really nice opening there for Bartosz with just his first two Pokemon. He led with the Pelipper and King Gambit, 
and just attacked. And that's all he needs to do, because he's going to just be able to do the same thing. Hurricane and Kaltau Cleave is almost certainly going to be able to KO this Gastron. Kaltau Cleave KO the Garganak is definitely going to KO this Gastron, because it is slightly less bulky. I'm trying to stall out the Tailwind a little bit with the Protector, maybe buying some thinking time for game two as mm -hmm. well, uh, because you are going into this best of three. The first strategy did not seem to be successful, so you do need to start to reevaluate here. I mean, who would have thought the Pelipper would be able to outsmart Gastrodon, but it's happened here in game one. And I think that is the critical thing. You know, Bartosz came in and straight away went on the offensive. This Pelipper's just been allowed to use the rain to bring its accuracy up for those Hurricanes and has just been able to keep connect to them. You know, five of them have gone out in this match so far. It then crucially went for the Tailwind, I think, at the right point with that nice protect on the King Gambit that just put him straight into the driving seat and forced Francesco to have to play a little bit defensively. And the issue is you can't play safely with switches when there is a defiant Pokemon on the field and you're rocking Intimidate. Yeah. So that certainly did, you know, cause a little bit of an issue for Francesco. Um, but you have to credit the way Bartoshek played that, you know, was really in control from the beginning with those leads. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, playing defensively, like switching in Intimidate, very good defensive play. Not when you're facing down a defiant Pokemon. So <laughs> True. the fact that Francesco was kind of forced to reposition, mm. like you're threatened by the Hurricanes, by the Pelipper, even if you're stopping the Hydro Pumps with the Gastrodon on the field. Uh, the Hurricanes are still doing good enough damage. That forces the Taurus back out. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes back in, we saw the Kowtow Cleave. Not even the Super Effective Iron Head was enough to KO that Garganackle. So really, really strong lead coming out from Bartosz there. Opting for the residual damage strategy, uh, it seemed on that first turn, because you were going for the, the f potential Fire Spin and the Salt Cure coming out from the Dragonite and the Garganackle. That needs to be a bit quicker uh, mm -hmm. for Francesco, I think, because the King Gambit and the Pelipper, even the Pelipper itself, is putting on enough offensive pressure that the slightly slower strategy of getting that residual damage uh, racking up, it seemed like that was just going to be too slow there. And the King Gambit and the Pelipper were in in able to be offensive enough to just break through that very defensive core. I mean, this King Gambit really stood out for me. It's a little bit off meta. We've seen it, you know, go very sort of, I want to say defensive as well, using things like that Assault Vest. You mm -hmm. know, it has a really good defense stat of 120 base power anyway. But really the thing I liked what Bartosz has done is switch it straight onto the offensive here. Not only is it running the Black Glasses to boost up its Dark type moves, but then having the Dark Terror as well allows it to really pack a punch with that Calton Cleave that, you know, is a great move, but Calton Cleave's only got 85 base power. It's not the highest of, you know, moves, but you can see how much destructive damage it can deal. Throw in a couple of Defiant boosts as well, and you're really just starting to roll through the opponents once the Tailwind is up on the field. Loving the adjustment, however, from Francesco here. We have got the Tauros here with the Glamora, but the great thing is that Bartosz has brought that King Gambit, so it's happily going to take a Defiant boost, and Pelipper's bringing the rain. Yeah, absolutely, but Glamora does seem to be a very, very good mix-up here, uh, because the Pelipper, classically in previous formats, was almost certainly going to be running the Focus Sash. Mm. Pelipper's been shifting away from that in this format. This one's going to be the Citrus Fairy we've seen in that previous game one. That means that Glamora could be threatening just a one-hit KO on it, because it is a very, very strong special attacker. Uh, it can just go for that power gem very comfortably, and that should be a knockout on Pelipper, because it's pretty defensively bulky, but mm. not that specially bulky. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a power gem was enough to pick up the KO on the Pelipper. And then that means the King Gambit's still threatened by the Willows or the close combat as well, so really nice mix-up with that Glamora. Definitely threatened enough to click Protect. Tauros goes straight for the Flare Blitz, even in the rain, does a little bit of chip to that opposing Pelipper here. Um, and, you know, it's going to have to take a little bit of recoil, but Glamora is following up with that power gem into the Pelipper, and it is enough to be able to get the KO. I like the double up here from Francesco, just guaranteeing that that power gem would be enough to be able to remove Pelipper from the field. So you don't have to worry about any more Hurricanes. Tauros can breathe a little easier. The one issue you have to contend with, though, is the rain is still going to be on the field for those turns. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really nice play there. Uh, committing to getting rid of that Pelipper. You know that it's not mm. carrying Protect, so it is a guaranteed power gem into that slot. One of the resistor to power gem is already on the field, I think. In fact, oh, poor, poor what is going to be able to resist as well, but that would still take massive damage. So, uh, yeah, just not quite comfortable that one power gem would be enough into the Pelipper, getting that extra chip of the Flare Blitz. Because, of course, Pelipper could be run specially bulky so that it mm -hmm. could survive an attack like that. Uh, but we still do have Hurricanes active on the field. <laughs> it happens to be a slightly stronger one now because this is going to be a Sharp Beak Salamence joining the field. Uh, so the Hurricanes are still going to be threatening quite nicely. And it's going to uh, going to be interesting to see which moves first between the Salamence and the Taurus. They both have the same base speed. Mm -hmm. They could both be run max speeds, like they do tend to be. Uh, so if the Salamence is able to move first, that means a Hurricane will KO this Taurus. If the Taurus moves first, that is a potential of a close combat or a will o -Wisp into the opposing King Gambit here. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very close to see which Pokemon moves first, and they will be very crucial as well. Well, we're going to see a Terrastalization coming out onto the field. It's going to be that Salamence for Bartosz going to be taking on the Steel Terra type as well. So again, good defensive typing and is still going to be able to access, you know, great moves like Hurricane in that range, still keep its same type attack bonus from its prior typing and threaten Pokemon like that Tauros. But Francesco is going to match with a Terra Estalization of his very own. And it's going to be that Glamora going to be going for the Ground Terra. Really nice adjustment because, you know, normally 
Glamora is four times weak to ground moves, but now it's going to take on the ground typing all of its very own. Very, very nice here, but Hurricane from the Salamence did move mm. first, so the Taurus could not go for a close combat into the non terra King Gamut. Close combat would have KO'd because it would have still been four times weak, or could have got the will -O's. so Salamence moving there, there first was very crucial. Uh, Earth Power is going to come out from this ground terra Glamora, and it's going to connect on the Salamence that has just terra as well. Fantastic read by Francesco. I mean, that is always one of those high risk, high reward plays. Normally, Salamence is a flying type, so would be immune to any of these ground types. But on the turn that it terrors into that steel, it gets hit by a ground type move. Fantastic play. Glamora is going to have to take a Calton Cleave for its trouble, so that Focus Sash is going to keep it hanging around for at least one more turn. Absolutely fantastic play from Francesco. Even getting the Toxic Spikes up, so whatever comes in in the back. Uh, should be getting poison there. Unless it is that Amoongus, but it does end up being that Pormat. That's going to break the focus out of the Pormat as well. Fantastic read from Francesco. Obviously, the Salamence is threatened by that Power Gem. Mm -hmm. Salamence usually trained quite offensively, not usually very specially offensively bulky. Power Gem, again, might have been able to pick up the knockout on that Salamence. So going for that defensive Steel Terror and reading that absolutely perfectly. Going for an Earth Power into what want, once was a Flying type. Very brave <laughs> play, but worked out absolutely perfectly here. So... Yeah, now the poor mod is going to be on that timer thanks to that uh, poison as well. You can just safely go for a double protection. There's no nothing that can be really done uh, about the fake outs there. You mm -hmm. do have to contend with the potential of the revival blessing. So it's always an interesting mind game of the Glomorant was in range of fake out. Mm. You can just get a KO with fake outs, but you can also go for a revival blessing this turn. Try and get back that Salamence or the Pelipper uh, that was so effective in that first game. So, yeah, whenever Portmore joins the field like this, there is always going to be that mind game. Mm -hmm. We've already seen Francesco make a fantastic read here as well. Now you've got to make another one. Are you going to be taking a fake out on the Glamora for the KO, potentially? Do you spike your shield on that to get some extra damage? Or do you go on the offensive expecting a Revival Blessing that could be coming out from this format? At the same time, Pormont's going to make a decision to fake out or to Revival Bless. It's going to be a switch, however, for Francesco. Dragonite's going to come into the field, so not allow Glamora to go down if fake out was going into that slot. Instead, it was actually the close combat. Dragonite's going to be able to take that really well. Of course, Mog Scale has now been broken, though, so it's going to be a little bit more vulnerable. But I think it's a much better trade-off at this point. Pormont is going to be affected by that Rocky Helmet as well. Really nice to see the item on that Dragonite. Garganarkle is going to have to take a Calton Cleave, but it can retaliate with a Salt Cure. And because this King Gambit is, you know, still in its Steel type, it's going to take a quarter damage with every turn thanks to the salt cure here so it's not going to be around for long yeah it's really going to start racking up at this point now you can't switch out at the moment you could potentially if you get off the revival blessing okay. so that you could be, be able to switch out but that would still be an extra turn you've got this quarter that's coming into the king gamut right now it would still have to take that extra quarter because you can't switch out mm -hmm. on the turn that you go for a revival blessing so the king gamut will definitely be below half at the end of this turn so yeah really really nice there switching into the dragonites potentially Pormot could be in range of an Extreme Speed Hicks. Mm. It has taken a minus one drop uh, from the close combat. Uh, it's not going to be able to Terra with the Dragonite. If it, could, if it still had access to the normal Terra, that's definitely a KO on the Pormot. No Revival Blessing guaranteed. That's the game over. But the fact that the, the normal Terra is not available, Pormot could survive and potentially get off that Revival Blessing. And mm. if it does, then maybe Salamence and Pelipper can make a comeback here. Uh, but you've still got to contend with the Dragonite and the Garganacle that are so bulky here as well. If you ignore the Garganacle by going for the Revival Blessing, that's probably an opportunity to go for a recover, but instead it's just going to be a Protector instead. Yeah, protecting on the Garganacle, but let's see if Dragonite does go for Extreme Speed. Is it going to be enough to get the KO? No, Pormont survives on 23 hit points remaining, so it is able to go for that Revival Blessing and bring a Pokemon back out from its Pokeball in the back for Bartosh, and this is definitely what Bartosh needs. Looks like it's going to be that Salamence. Yes, going to be Salamence coming back into the fray, and certainly the more offensive Pokemon of the two. Calton Cleave is going to come out from the King Gambit, not be able to pick up the KO against that Dragonite, but will again take a little bit of residual due to the Rocky Helmet. Salt Cure is going to do its thing, Poison's going to do its thing. There's a few timers on Bartosh's side, but it's good that he's now got that Salamence in the back. Like you said, four and a half Pokemon. Yeah, absolutely. And we can also see the strategy of uh, Francesco coming through really, really nicely here. Mm. All this re residual damage is absolutely racking up. The King Gambit taking so much from the Sulkia, from the Rocky Helmets. And now if it attacks the Dragonite again, it will be KO'd at the end of this turn because the Sulkia and the Rocky Helmet would be enough. It will survive one more Sulkia. So if it doesn't attack the Dragonite and goes for the Garganacle instead, then it would survive just for one more turn. But the Pormont is definitely being KO'd at the end of whatever turn it stays on the field for because of that poison not even needing the Salt Cure or the Rocky Helmet. Uh, so you kind of want to switch one of them out. If the, whichever one you leave on the field is going to be KO'd most likely at the end of the turn. And if you do switch one out, then it's still just going to be KO'd in the future. Like if the poison uh, po Pormot switches out and the poison comes back in, it'll still be KO'd on that final turn. So yeah, really, st still really nice position for Francesco. Somewhat pinning for Bartosz with all this residual damage. Yeah, Garganarko going for a Protector again, just playing a little defensively. Francesco wants to make sure that he's got the player Pokemon advantage going into these last turns of Game 2. 
you can see Gargnarko, great defensive play here as Dragonite goes for Roost as well, just wanting to make sure that it's got some extra HP in the bank for these moves coming through. Because at the end of the day, Bartosz Pokemon are on a timer. All we really need to do is out. Um, outplay them at this point, stay on the field longer than they will be able to do with the timers on them. The rain has stopped, however, so that's one thing that has left the field. But at the moment, these four Pokemon are sitting pretty proud. Yeah, absolutely. And so that double protect is likely to seal the game at this point mm -hmm. because that would have been a KO into the Garganacle. Most likely just from the close combat, Kowtow Cleave would have been redirected into the Dragonite, and then it would have still done, done some very, very nice damage. But now the Garganacle is still on the field. The Dragonite is now super healthy because it didn't get attacked from the redirected Kowtow mm -hmm. Cleave. Uh, thanks to that roost. So yeah, really, really nice position for that Dragonite and the Garganacle, especially with the fact that the King Gamma is definitely KO'd mm -hmm. at the end of this turn. Definitely can't switch out anymore. So it is going to be going down to the Soul Cure. Uh, even if you even go for an Extreme Speed at this yeah. point, it would still be uh, enough to pick up the KO. And if you do go for Extreme Speed into King Gambit, Salamence is probably not going to be uh, strong enough to KO the Garganacle because it is the Sharp Beak. If it was Life Orb, the Draco Meteor would still be getting that boost, but the Draco mm -hmm. Meteor is not making use of that boost from the Sharp Beak probably not quite enough to KO the Garganacle. And e even if it does, then it still has to contend with the Draco Meteor that could come out from the Dragonite the, the next turn as well, and the Glamora Power Gem. So it is somewhat pinned at this point in for, for Bartosz. Uh, there's lots of parts to the victory for Francesco. Uh, mm -hmm. At the end of this turn, King Gambit goes down, and then one of the two Pokemon in the back, even if one Pokemon gets KO'd to the Salamence this turn, would be able to deal with the Salamence in one shot. I mean, that's the thing with Rival Blessing. When we last saw Salamence, it had that Steel Terra type, but when it comes back, it doesn't have that anymore. It comes back in its natural Flying and Dragon form here. So that Power Gem, like you mentioned, will be hurting against that Salamence. But Glamora's actually going to join us sooner rather than later. Extreme Speed does get the KO on that King Gambit, and it's now just Salamence on Bartosz's side. And it looks like Francesco is really trying to push for this Game 3. Salamence, again, you know, only has the single target move here. It goes for the Hurricane into that opposing Dragonite. Does a very decent chunk of damage, but between Glamora and Dragonite, they both have the capability to pick up a KO against this Salamence. Yeah, absolutely, and if you go for Draco Meteor into that Dragonite, you mm -hmm. drop your special attack down to minus two, and then you really have to rely on a critical hit to KO the, the Garganacle. And that's even if you can KO the Glamora on the first turn, because Power Gem would KO you, and survive the Salt Cure on that turn. So, uh, yeah, really, really nice adjustments for Francesco. I think that Glamora was absolutely fantastic as an <laughs> adjustment. In the first game, there didn't seem to be too much immediate offensive pressure coming out. There was lots of potential residual damage, which was very effective in the mm -hmm. game too. But the fact that there was something that was so strong and threatening KOs on Pokemon meant that Bartosz had to adapt to that rather than just sit on the field with his leads mm -hmm. and just attack, attack, attack. So yeah. that meant that Bartosz had to ad had to adjust and that opened up the opportunities mm -hmm. for all these re residual damages to come into play. So the Gamora, really, really nice. And obviously that fantastic read of Earth powering a flying <laughs> yes. type Salamence that did turn into a Steel type, very impactful for sure. And I'm glad you mentioned adjustments because I was really impressed by the way Francesco came out in that game too, double targeted straight into the Pelipper. That had been such a key disruptor for Bartosz in that game one and just identifying, hey, this Pokemon, it needs to go. I then need to be able to run my strategy rather than play the game that Bartosz is dictating. So really nice for Francesco to come into that game too. Question, however, coming into game three, what do you do now if you're Bartosz? Do you stick with the same leads you've had in games one or two? Or do you have the flexibility to shake things up? Well, one of the best ways of dealing with the Glamora would surely be that Dreadnought. Mm. Dreadnought wasn't brought, brought to the previous game, uh, or the previous two games, I should say, uh, but would be threatening a lot of damage into the Glamora. It does carry the Focus Sash, so it would be able to survive one of the liquidations. But you could always just go for a Rock Slide first and then follow it up with the liquidation. They do have to contend with the potential of the Gastron that could be on Francesco's side of the field. But that was previously dropped in that game too, so mm -hmm. um, you'd be able to just ignore that completely. Uh, and maybe go for the liquidations if Gastron is left on the bench for Francesco, because Glamora was very successful in that previous mm -hmm. game. It would be very, very nice to bring it again, because it does threaten the Pelipper with a potential of a one-hit KO. Francesco wasn't that confident that it would be with that extra double up, mm -hmm. but very nice play there. And also threatens the Salamence very nicely in and out of its terror, as we have seen. Yeah, the thing with Glamora as well, because it's running that Focus Sash, it does buy Francesco maybe an extra turn of damage, um, the potential to be able to get a critical KO. Yes, you might get the trade-off and lose Glamora in the next turn, but it does just allow you that little bit of breathing room. So as much as I do love Gastrodon, I do think it was a fantastic adjustment for Francesco and one that he would be wise to bring into Game 3. Yeah, absolutely. you almost certainly going to be bringing Gastrodon into the, into the rain because you want to be absorbing those water-type attacks. So... Maybe Amoongus could be in a potential adjustment because this Amoongus uh, is going to be carrying the, the Leaf Storm. So mm -hmm. Leaf Storm is going to be able to do some significant damage to potential Gastrodon. We did see it turn into a Steel type, so then it would be able to take on the Amoongus quite comfortably after that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's da is down to Bartosz to be adjusting here because here's Glamora and Taurus coming out for Francesco to side the field. But it is not going to be the Pelipper <laughs> at, at this point. It could still be in the back, but it is going to be instead Salamence paired up with that King Gambit. Yeah, really nice to see Salamence come out of the blocks here and be able 
Um, I mean, you can see the Tauros is going to be able to get the Intimidate down and once again give King Gamba a cheeky Defiant boost here. But it's nice to see Glamora straight away being able to apply a lot of pressure to that Salamence. Yeah, absolutely. You've got potential of maybe even a Sucker Punch and a Draco Meteor into the Glamora. That should probably be able to pick up the KO, especially after mm -hmm. the fact that King Gambit has taken a Defiant boost at this point. If you do go for that play and you do get right, you still open yourself up to the potential of the Close Combat into the King Gambit or the potential of the Willow into the, into the King Gambit. Close Combat may not be enough to be able to KO at this point because it has been uh, intimidated from that opposing Salamence. So, yeah, the King Gambit's not going for that play at all. Going to be uh, going for the switch out into the Pelipper instead. Yeah, Pelipper's still here. It's back on the field, switching King Gambit out, saving it for later, where it can apply a little bit more offensive pressure. And Toro's going for that will -O Pelipper actually avoids, but it would have been going into that King Gambit. So a nice adjustment here, as Salamence can go for that Hurricane into Glamora. Does about a third of damage and does get the confusion on it. Now, this is where the dice rolls have to be in Francesco's favor in order for Glamora to be able to move in this turn. It is confused, but it's able to still break through and go for that Power Gem, shooting them towards Salamence against the one-hit KO. Yeah, very nice indeed. Not falling for the same thing again could have potentially gone for the earth power into the steel type elements but getting it right two times in a row here catching the terror in the game two and catching the non-terror in that game three so salamence has been ko'd immediately here mm -hmm. now the widow was missed not too impactful it would have just gone for a pelipper that would have done a little bit of chip damage but then the fact that francesco wasn't confident the power gem would just straight up ko the pelipper even that tiny bit of willow was chip damage might have definitely put it in range mm -hmm. of that attack but the fact that the salamence went down just to one power gem probably means the Pelipper is going to be in range of that attack as well. But that was a really, really nice play from Francesco there, being able mm -hmm. to catch the Salamence, because the King Gambit was threatened too much by the will for the close combats that come out. It sacrificed its Defiant boost. If it comes back onto the field, it's no longer going to be at that plus one. It's just going to be at neutral. So mm -hmm. uh, the, it's not going to be the King Gambit. It's going to be the Paul Mott instead. So that can come in and get that Revival Blessing into the Salamence as well, and threaten down the potential of the Gamora with the fake, fake out, so you can get a Tailwind for the Pelipper as well. That would allow the Pelipper to then be a Gamora answer, because then you can get a Hydro Pump mm -hmm. into Gamora before the Power Gem would be able to affect the Pelipper. It would also be able to threaten the Taurus with the Hurricanes as well. You still have to worry about the potential of the Gastrodon in the back, so if there is going to be that, uh, then if the Taurus does ever switch out into the Gastrodon, Glimura would be safe even if the Tailwind was up, and then a Power Gem could still be the answer to take care of the Pelipper. Yeah, Salamence might be down and out, but not for the count if Paul Mott is able to go for that Revival Blessing and bring it back into this Game 3. Once again, however, Paul Mott, you know, has a decision to make. It can go for that, or it can go for that Fake Out and then start applying pressure to Francesco, who again has to try and work around that, going for some defensive switching. And we see the Tauros actually leave the field. You have to be careful, though, that when it comes back on, it's not going to be facing that King Gambit. Gastrodon is here, however, of course, I'm happy to see it. And it could be exactly like you were describing there, Jamie, switching in to be able to draw in any of these Hydro Pumps from Pelipper. The fake out was going to the Glamora, so Toxic Debris is now on the field, so the switching on Bartosz's side is going to be a little bit more difficult, but Pelipper not going on the offensive here and just going straight for a Tailwind. Yeah, very, very nice there. The Pelipper now outspeeds the opposing Glamora. You can't go for a Hydro Pump very safely, but with the extra chip damage on the fake out and the mm -hmm. Hurricane previously, Glamora could potentially be in range of a double shot slash a close combat. Uh, it's going to be very close if that is going to be the case, and if it is, then that means that Pelipper is not threatened with a KO this turn the worst you can do is Ice Beam into the Pelipper. You can still get the Earth Power into the form up for sure, but Pelipper would be freed up to go for one of those Hurricanes once again. We saw how disruptive it was in that game one, and now it's in a similar position to be able to do exactly the same thing in this game two, so long as the Pormot is strong enough. Mm -hmm. If you go for the close combat, it needs to be able to KO the Gamora. If Gamora was bulky enough to survive that attack, Pelipper is then threatened by the Power Gem because you, we wanted to go for the Hurricane into the Gastron uh, in that slot. You could double up into the Gamora with the close combat and the Hurricane if you're not confident the close combat is going to be strong enough, and also switching out is going to be nice to preserve the Pelipper as well, in just in case that the close combat would not be strong enough if it does go into the Gamora. Nearly running out of time there, but Bartosz makes the adjustment and brings King Gambit onto the field. Now Francesco is making a switch, and if it is this Taurus, then King Gambit is primed to be able to get a nuller boost, but no, it's going to be the Dragonite, but at least King Gambit's hanging around for when that Taurus does rejoin. Paul Mark goes for the Revival Blessing, so he's going to be able to bring that Salamence back into the match, revive it back up to 50% HP, and suddenly, you know, Francesco still has to contend with that pesky Dragon. Gastrodon goes for the Earth Power, takes Pormot down to its Focus Sash, and this time there's no poison that Pormot has been, you know, caught by at this point. Yes, the Toxic Debris is on the field, but Pormot hasn't switched into it. Yeah, but it is definitely in range of the Extreme Speed at this point, and Dragonite has just joined the field, so mm -hmm. Pormot's done its job. It's been able to revive the, revive the Salamence, so now it can just go down to the Extreme Speed, unless you want to be preserving Fake Out. Fake Out is going to be very nice for it, mm -hmm. but if you do opt to do that, 
and then you switch out. As soon as you come back in, at some point you're going to be taking the to toxic mm -hmm. poison or the poison at this point, so that you'd just be KO'd on the next turn that you would go for that fake out. So, mm -hmm. uh, interesting decision for Bartosh here. Do you just sacrifice your form up potentially to this extreme speed that could be coming out from the Dragonite, uh, or you do you try and preserve it so that you can get just one more attack, maybe one close combat, or a fake out that could be very impactful in the future as well? Because the King Gambit's still going to be doing some very nice damage here with its Kowtow Cleese, and it looks like the Pulma is going to be preserved. Here. Yeah, Pelipper's going to join the field, of course. Both the Pokemon in the back of Bartosz there are flying types, so they're not going to worry about the toxic debris on the floor. And it's nice to be able to switch in here. You might have thought if you're Francesco, hey, uh, maybe Salamence is coming in here. I can try an Ice Beam into that slot, because the Intimidate would be detrimental to my Dragonite. Um, so Pelipper, I think, is a much nicer switch in here for Bartosz, as well as going for the Terra on that King Gambit, getting that Terra Dark back in. King Gambit, I think, is finally going to switch on the Go button here and start picking up some KOs. As Gastrodon, I think, wisely protecting, is going for the Calton Cleave. I believe it is going to be trying to target down into that Dragonite that has um, now chipped away at the multi-scale. So Dragonite going to be more vulnerable, particularly when the Salamence comes in from the back. But Dragonite once again catching that King Gambit with Fire Spit. It's not going to be dealing too much damage, but critically, King Gambit can't switch out now. It's going to have this residual damage. Yeah, absolutely. The King Gambit being trapped there is quite nice indeed, because that is committed to the Terra. So mm -hmm. now you have to just keep your King Gambit on the field with this Terra. You can't switch out to try and preserve uh, if the King Gambit would ever be threatened by any of the attacks. So that you can just go on the offensive now with the King Gambit. Still going to be doing some very nice damage you saw that that was the multi-scale uh, yep. get, get impacting that amount of damage reduction it's still going to be doing at like double that amount of damage previously uh, to the Dragonite so that would still do a lot of damage to the Dragonite almost certainly put it in range of a follow-up hurricane mm -hmm. from the Pelicans we see that we saw that in the previous game in game one ha hurricane breaking the multi-scale and then the combination of the two attacks was enough to KO the Dragonite Gastron's not really threatening too much damage here Ice Beam's Pelipper not too impactful King Gamut's not a steel to have anymore Earth Power also not too impactful yeah, Extreme Team is going to come out from that Dragonite, do a little bit of chip into King Gambit. Pelipper retaliating with the Hurricane does certainly put it in range and gets the confusion on it as well. That's always something you have to contend with and cross your fingers for if you are Bartosz that that's going to activate. King Gambit is able to go for the Kelton Cleave, finds its mark down on that posing Dragonite and does get the KO. So we don't even have to find out what's happening with that confusion because Dragonite is out. Absolutely, and the Gastron's still going to be able to do some damage. It depends if it's just going for the Pelipper with the Ice Beam or the Earth Power here into the opposing King Gambit. Ooh. Not quite able to pick up the KO on that King Gambit, thanks to that uh, Dark Terror. Again, defensively coming into play here, and the fact that the Dragonite has left the field. Fire Spin is not a Soul Cure. Soul Cure lasts. Mm -hmm. Fire Spin is now gone as soon as the Pokemon that did set it is there. So now King Gambit has, has been able to survive through this turn, mm -hmm. even through the potential of the residual damage that could have come out. That means that it's threatening the Sucker Punch KO on this Glamorous. It almost certainly will be enough thanks to that Dark, uh, dark Terror, mm -hmm. going to be boosting it slightly further as well. The rain is gone, so you do have to worry about the accuracy on your Hurricanes now, but you can still be able, able to set a Tailwind uh, for the Pokemon in the back. A lot of Bartosh's Pokemon are very, very low, except for the Pelipper that is still quite healthy, but still very much mm -hmm. threatened by a KO by the Glamora. But yeah, it's still being able to do some very, very nice damage to Francesco's side of the field. One of the defensive pieces has already been taken out, so Dragonite is not going to be able to be just roosting up and preserving itself and getting that residual damage anymore with the Extreme Speeds. Extreme Speed would have KO'd the King Gamut and the Pulmot at this point, so the fact that that is gone, and if you do get your speed control with the Pelipper as well, is going to be very nice, but mm -hmm. Pelipper probably wants to be getting its Hurricanes nice and accurate once again. going to be switching out to reset the rain later. Yeah, that was an unfortunate shortcoming for Gastrodon there, not quite being able to pick up the KO against King Gambit. Bartosz is able to switch in the Salamence, throw down and intimidate here, but really their special attack is it doesn't matter too much. The key thing is getting that Salamence in on the field as Sucker Punch connects into the Glamora and gets the KO against it. So Salamence relatively safe switching in here. The only thing it's got to worry about is a potential Ice Beam coming out from that opposing Gastrodon. Absolutely. The, the Gastron can KO either of these Pokemon at this point. doesn't matter which one it goes for. There, there's their Earth Powers. The King Gambit is finally taken care of. Uh, but yeah, that King Gambit has put in a lot of work already. Massive Kowtow please into the Dragonite and already the Sucker Punch as well, KOing that Glamora. I guess one thing, though, that, you know, Francesco is going to be relieved by, the King Gambit has now gone. You don't have to worry about Defiant when you bring your Tauros back in. The Francesco is now going to be forced to do is his last two remaining Pokemon. The issue you've got to contend with, though, is Pelipper is going to be able to come bring the rain, and then the Hurricanes from either Salamence or the Pelipper are going to be able to get the KOs onto that opposing Tauros. Question, though, has Francesco used his Terra yet? I don't think he has I yet. Believe so. so, yeah, the steel typing on the, the Gastron could be quite nice mm -hmm. so long as the Pormot has been taken care of. Yes. Because Pormot is the main, main main way of being able to deal with the opposing Gastrodon mm -hmm. with just close combat regularly, or if True. it terrors, then it's going to be uh, going for the steel type terror as well. Uh, yeah, the Taurus is still going to be quite nice here. It's still going to be able to threaten some nice damage. The Pormot is going to be in range of any attacks, so uh, you just have to worry about going for potentially a fake out this turn. If you go for a fake out, Pormot gets KO'd at the end of the turn anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Your Cormac's come in as well, and he's probably your best answer to the Gastrodon. And now it's only got one turn on the field, so the Toxic Spike's going to come back here very nicely. Gastron could very easily just protect on this turn. Pormor gets KO'd, and then suddenly there's no answer to the Gastron anymore because you can just go for your Terra Steel, resist mm -hmm. all of the attacks that could come out from the Sanament and the Pelipper. And then you've still got to contend with the Taurus as well, while you're not able to really break through the Gastron very well. So really, really nice position for Florentesco here because of that Toxic Spice. Just that little bit of extra damage that didn't need to be set on the same turn, that was set in the, like, in the past so mm -hmm. that it was coming back here. Uh, very, very nice for Francesco. Yeah, laying the groundwork for the end game here with that Toxic Debris. I mean, the thing is here as well, if you're Francesco, you could just go for a double protect and just allow the Toxic damage to do what it does. But Pormont not going to read into that, switches out. So depending if Francesco has gone into that and just gone for this double protect, would potentially allow Bartosz the opportunity to capitalize, going for something like a Tailwind here um, and just getting the speed advantage right up on his side of the field. Gastrodon gets that first protect in, um, but I believe it is normally known to be slower than the Toro. So Toro will be going on the offensive here. Flair blends into Salamence. Not going to be doing too much damage, though, at all, leaving itself now very vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. And Hurricane was fired off into that Taurus, and now it is going to be that 3v1. So mm. that Pormont being preserved, very, very nice there. But the issue is still that poison whenever it comes yeah. back in. So long as Gastron has Protect active, it's going to be fine. So you just need to worry about when you're positioning your Pormont on the field. If you can bring in your Pormont on the, on the turn that Gastron does go for a Protect, then you're fine. But you don't really need to protect in front of these two Pokemon. If you go for your Terra Steel, like we are seeing Francesco do now, mm -hmm. you don't need to worry. You can always just attack the Salamence. You can always just attack the Pelipper. Because the, the worst they can do is threaten you with Hurricanes. You don't want to be Draco Meteor to you drop your special attack. True. Uh, even though that is slightly stronger than Hurricanes, you can always go for Confusions as well with the double Hurricane. <laughs> but this Steel-type Gastrodon is not going to worry too much. You just need to attack with the Gastron until the Pormont comes back in and then protect on that final turn. Well, let's see who Gastrodon has targeted. Salamence has protected the first Hurricane Connects. You can see it's not doing much damage, no. but that confusion, the birds are in play at this point in time. So Gastrodon is going to have to contend with whether it's going to be able to deal any of that damage that you've spoken about here. It is confused and it is going to hit itself in confusion. So no damage coming out from the Gastrodon here. And you can see that if this keeps happening, the momentum that Bartosz is going to be able to build up is going to be able to take this game three for him. But Gastrodon still is giving Francesco a chance. Yeah, absolutely. The hurricane confusions oh. are the important <laughs> things here. But that was a Gastron Protect. Mm -hmm. That was a turn that Pormont could have switched in on, on the turn so that you'd be able to get the post combat. Well, actually, no, the poison would just happen at the end of the turn, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. as soon as it joins mm -hmm. the field, so that wouldn't even matter. So the play there might have been just to hurricane your own Salamence to get, get a, a switch into the, the Pormont. But <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's got to be the way. Like, the Hurricanes may do it. You've got Confusions, but you saw that was really, mm -hmm. really low damage on the Gastrodon. Maybe if you're getting some Hurricane Confusions and then you're being able to stop the Recovers, that might be the way back in. Because the Gastron kept well, still reasonable chip damage with that Sharp Beak, much yeah. stronger than the Pelipper. So actually, this is pretty reasonably chipping the Gastron down. It's down to ye the yellow, so it doesn't need to be going for the Recover. It does have the Citrus, mm -hmm. but that's a one-time use, so that's already gone now. It's going to be very nice for the Gastron to be able to go for that, but it's just going for a cover. Back to full HP, so we're resetting again. It just needs to be able to KO the Salamence at any point. Ice Beam will KO the Salamence. Mm -hmm. You can then put Protect on the Pormot, uh, Pormot going for the close combat, and then Gastron wins the 1v1 one one against, one one against the Pelipper, almost certainly, unless there's all the Hurricane Confusions. So uh, it's still, <laughs> still a very interesting position here. We're going to mm. potentially have to worry about time at this point as well. Don't Gast talk the Hurricanes into existence, Jamie. Well, the, hurricane, <laughs> the Hurricanes are going to happen. It's the Hurricane Confusions that, that needs to be true. an important one. And you're going to be clicking two of them each turn, mm -hmm. so they're going to be increasing the chances of getting all of them as well. And there oh, we go, yes. trying to get that paid switch into that Ooh. format. Hurricane your own own Pokemon there. But that was not the turn that the Gastron went for the Protect. If that happened on the Protect turn, mm -hmm. that would have been a brilliant play to be able to get the Pormot in. But now the Pormot comes in on a turn, Gastron can definitely go for Protect. So that means that there is nothing that can be done from this Pormot. It's still poisoned. Even if it wasn't poisoned, the Toxic Spikes is still there. Pormot would be KO'd at the end of this turn. So. That, needs, that hurricane absolutely needs to happen on the turn that the Gastron protected. If that was the previous turn, mm -hmm. brilliant. You just have to contend with a double protect chance. Now Gastron guarantees it gets to protect, and it almost certainly wins the one we won against the opposing Pelipper, unless there's all of the hurricane confusions. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. You know there's going to be a protect from the Gastrodon. The Pelipper can't really capitalize on it capitalize on it at all and in game one I said you know who would have thought Pelipper would outsmart Gastrodon but in game three Gastrodon has regrouped and come back in and has now outsmarted this Pelipper of course like you mentioned there are still those dice rolls regarding confusion so maybe Pelipper will be able to have the last laugh but Gastrodon in a formidable position here to try and take game three for its trainer yeah it's, it's really really in Francesco's favor the fact that there are hurricane confusions means there is a chance but the rain is gone as well Hurricanes are yeah. not 100% accurate anymore. True. They are that shaky accuracy. It does connect, <laughs> at least. And we'll have to see if there's going to be any 
confusions, but that's really, really not enough damage. There is the confusion, <laughs> so we do have our chance. We can get all the hurricanes and all the hurricane confusions, but it is still st very, very far in the Gastrodon's favor because it will just slowly chip away at the Pelipper. Uh, guess if it gets any kind of damage into the Pelipper, it probably wins the one we want if it just ends up in time with a recover. The Pelipper's taking chip damage, so mm -hmm. as long as you are clicking recover with the Gastrodon, you will win on time. Yeah, so. and Pelipper only has nine more of these hurricanes to be able to use as well, and yes. if any of them miss, then you're going to be in a really difficult situation. Not going to be able to touch it for any offensive damage because your only other move is Hydro Pump. Ice Beam comes out, does connect onto Pelipper, takes it below 50% here. Obviously, Pelipper's going to have a little munch on its berry as well, gain a little bit of HP back. But the difficult thing is, once those Hurricanes are gone, you really cannot touch Gastrodon just because it has teared into the Steel type. Doesn't mean it loses its Storm Drain ability. That is still active. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see there, the rain's One not there. Down. Shaky accuracy with mm. the Hurricane, not going to be there. Another Ice Beam into the Pelipper. Really nice here. Just needs two more Ice Beams to be able to finish off this game. So you need the Hurricanes to connect. You need a Confusion this turn, really, to be able to get back into this game. It's still so far in the Gastrodon's favor. No Confusion. You've got one more chance. That's the that one more ice beam will do it. So you need all of your hurricanes connect. You need this one to confuse, and you need every single confusion hit. And otherwise, this Gastron will be able to take this game. Oh. There is the confusion, so there is the tiniest of chances back into this game thanks to that. So we'll have to see if that is going to break through. Let's have a look. Gastron is confused, but it's able to break through and go for the ice beam. Finds the connect on the Palapa, and Francesco Pardini is able to take game three. We may no longer be in the Sword and Shield era. We are here in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, and so is Gastrodon. You can never count it out. Absolutely not. Uh, taking care of all the counters to that Gastrodon very, very well indeed. Uh, the fact that the poor mop was just going to be poisoned by that toxic debris. We haven't really had to contend with hazards in VGC. No. At all. I was going <laughs> to try and give an example of when it was, but we haven't. And now the toxic <laughs> debris just setting up those toxic spikes. However many turns in in the what ten turns onwards, mm -hmm. and then the Pormont got poisoned, and then eventually got KO'd that that poison. So really, really nice setting up that ball position for so far in the future to be able to allow that Gastron to be the win condition that Francesco needed it to be. I mean, you have to credit Bartosz as well. He played that incredibly, and I really like the adjustments, playing around that King Gambit, switching onto the offensive and defensive typing as well. As it turned out, just allowed him so much flexibility in that game, but. You've got to really wake up early in order to outsmart a Gastrodon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you do need your answers to Gastrodon. We've mm -hmm. We just saw it there. Yeah. It can <laughs> just very much recover and not be KO'd. The Steel typing, genius Terra yes, type on that. there because it resisted everything that the Pelipper and the, the Salamence could go for. Obviously, it doesn't resist the water when it's Steel typing, but it doesn't care. Storm Drain. So mm -hmm. it's still very much the answer. So taking care of the poor Mop very early as well. King Gambit could have been a very, very impactful Pokemon for that Gastron, but the fact that that was taken out uh, quite mm -hmm. quite early into the, well, reasonably early into the game mm -hmm. as well meant that there was just no more counters to that Gastron. So really, really nicely played in that end game. Yeah, I did love the poor Mop though. The fact that it was able to go for that Revival Blessing mm -hmm. and bring that Salamence elements back certainly did you know potentially put a spanner in the works there against Pardini's kind of strategy it just meant that you had to deal with that Pokemon one more time it's more intimidates coming your way but I think having those key Pokemon in Glamora and Gastrodon that are those special attackers meant you didn't have to worry so much about it and that turn in game two where you went yes. for the earth power into the steel Salamence absolutely, absolutely beautiful that's yeah. definitely a key moment to take away from Liverpool yeah what like maybe one of the best plays that we've seen on stream so mm -hmm. far this weekend really really nice and we saw a couple of other plays like the hurricane into your own Salamence mm -hmm. Was mm -hmm. the play just to turn earlier? The wrong time. You needed to catch it on the Gastron Protect. If you attack yourself when the Gastron is attacking that turn, it's got a guaranteed protect. It needs to be the potential of trying to double protect and failing. That was mm -hmm. the only way back into that game at that point because uh, you needed that close combat into the format. But yeah, fantastic <laughs> game. Br like, brilliant, brilliant game to open the stream. Yes. And yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what Francesco has to say. So we will be cutting to a very short break and we'll be right back with our interview of the winner of the top 32, Francesco Pardini. Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. We certainly kicked off the broadcast in style with a fantastic victory in top 32 by Francesco Pardini. Huge congratulations. That was such a fun match to commentate over. How are you feeling right now? Well, I feel really tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, because the match was uh, really, really tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, plenty of 50-50s. Mm -hmm. So I have to be very, very focused because I thought to have a, a good matchup against Rain Team. But... Uh, Bartos had some particular thim mm, things mm -hmm. in his teams that changed completely the, the three-hit KO into its <laughs> KOs and so on. So 
I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Yeah, we definitely saw the difficulty you faced in game one when Bartosz led with that Pelipper and the King Gambit. And the King Gambit's run a little bit differently to how the meta has kind of formed that Pokemon. It certainly gave you a tough time in that game one. Can you talk us through your thoughts in that game and then your adjustment into game two? Of course. I expected um, an Among Us lead. Mm -hmm. Among Us men's Salamence lead or Among Us King Gambit because uh, I know that uh, my opponent uh, knows that King Gambit was a problem for me, mm -hmm. especially with an Among Us on his side. Uh, I didn't accept, expect uh, Pelipper and King Gambit, mm -hmm. so I prepared this kind of uh, stolly mm -hmm. uh, Bulk lead down. Yeah, <laughs> with Garganacle and Dragonite in order to make Fire Spin and Soul mm -hmm. Core on the Among Us, yes. uh, protect, uh, kill the Among Us in well two three turns Just and then happen. and then face with Cold King Gambit, <laughs> but he completely surprised me with Pelipper, so mm -hmm. I had completely to to rebuild the lead during the games yeah. there, uh, but. Everything goes very, <laughs> very good, so I'm happy. Well, we saw that adjustment coming into game two, and straight away you were like, Pelipper, no more. I'm going to double target into it, get yeah. rid of it. But that wasn't the only hype moment of game two. There was this amazing play you made with Lamora where you went for the Earth Power into a Salamence, correctly predicting that it was going to go into Terra Steel. Can you talk us through your thoughts at that point? Uh, in Italy, we say that it's a play del pardo, the yeah. play of pardo. So <laughs> crazy is all in. And, uh, and only you can make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a copy of mine. So, uh, <laughs> no, but honestly, there I had to to push because um, with the open team sheets mm -hmm. you can read something that in the past seasons you couldn't because uh, he knew that I will always mm -hmm. so I knew that probably he will not uh, get a, a burn on King Gambit mm -hmm. which was as we said yeah uh, the best part of his uh, of his matchup so I goes there because I had um, a little bit of I was scared about bulky, special bulky Pelipper, mm -hmm. and if Pelipper there uh, endured the power gem, uh, it would have been a very I different I game. I, 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 the game is 2-0, two, two yeah. But it wasn't to be. Pelipper went down no, thanks no, to that no, double perfect, up. perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, talking of cool Pokemon on your team, you've already mentioned the Fire Spin on Dragonite. That was a really nice tech to see. But I want to talk a little bit about the Glamora as well. As much as I'd love to just talk about Gastrodon all day, you picked the correct Gastrodon with the green form, I have to say. Glamora is one of these Pokemon that slowly started to creep into the meta. Can you talk us why you wanted to put that on your team and how effective it's been for you in this tournament? The, the the idea of my team it's uh, it's particular because mm -hmm. I wanted to like in the in the singles uh, yeah. to put a lot of uh, like hazards in play hazards yeah. exactly uh, toxic spikes and so on and uh, I wanted to to beat Don Dozo mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> not with a haze mm -hmm. or with a special counter because otherwise the overall uh, of the team in my mm -hmm. opinion mm, it's not good well you then have to commit to like a haze yeah, user and exactly. it, it may not be a good fit so i decided to 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 go for the hazards mm -hmm. so toxic spikes fire spin mm -hmm. uh salt, salt cure, cure in order to have uh, this strategy and also with three pokemons which are very uh, offensive like dragapult for example mm -hmm. choice band dragapult so i have the damages by uh, by also the um, the spikes and mm -hmm. glimora in in this idea it's simply perfect also yeah. because the the type of Niligo it's super it's yeah super it's great. a nice little throwback as well and little it's nice Niligo. you can change <laughs> the type as well yeah, if, if needs yeah, be because yeah, you know the yeah, typing yeah. is always a little bit difficult well we'll let you go get prepared for your top 16 match but before you go is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to while you're here on the broadcast well i have to i want to give a shout out to my girlfriend of course mm -hmm. because uh he support and support me mm -hmm. every every day and to my friend Azuya which helped me preparing this uh, this amazing team oh brilliant well good luck in the rest of the tournament I need it for the <laughs> will-o-wisps <laughs> oh yes fingers crossed for all those will-o-wisps well we <laughs> will be coming with top 16 very very soon so don't go anywhere Pokemon trainers